Howdy there guys and girls, Ruckus here with another Blitz gameplay episode. I am working my way through a large backlog of projects at the moment. It's kind of a good problem to have, I guess. I've got, uh, hopefully coming up in quick succession, a T-34 Independence gameplay vid, a VK-3001D gameplay vid, uh, the tier 6 of the Leopard 1 line, that is. And an entire episode dedicated towards the IS-4, the uh, newest tier 10 in my garage. Played a bunch of games with Pimp Daddy last week in that thing, and there are some doozies in there. But as I was looking through my save game folder, I realized I've got a heap of these Black Prince replays saved that are uh, well overdue to be put up. I finished the grind of the Carnarvon quite a while ago, and I've just been sitting on this thing in no rush to buy that Carnarvon. I hated it on PC, and I know it's not going to be any better here on Blitz. The Black Prince, though, is a very reliable Tier 7 Heavy. The armor is good, the gun is fast firing and accurate, penetration is okay, uh, although the alpha damage does lack a bit of punch. But it's got that uh, Churchill top speed that means it's hard to shift around the battlefield. 20 k's per hour top speed that is. And that tends to make the games, in my opinion, less fun and dynamic. And as such, not really worth keeping once I've finished the grind. It can also make finding interesting replays difficult if you spend most of your time driving around trying to get into the correct position and not doing any actual fighting. It's not a problem here on mines though, nice small map. And very easy to approach the midsection where all the action happens and get into the battle. So the Reds mediums, these uh, tier 5 and 6 mediums had taken the hill easily. No opposition to them getting the hill but they didn't defend the approach. And that's allowed me to get easily up into uh, the attack here. Chase them off the hill. The Reds are doing this flanking maneuver through town into our rear, but you rarely ever see that work out well. There's a tier 6 KV-1S here who does not have the top gun. He is no threat to the Black Prince's armor, nor is that VK-302M. So charge, Black Prince. So it's a tier 7 game, obviously, and we just saw a bit of server lag there. I tend to get a lot of these for some reason in the Black Prince. Take out that threat, uh, the teams are evenly scored and Black Prince has run into some tough opposition in the form of the enemy IS and T25AT. Now although the Black Prince's gun does not have a punchy amount of alpha, the rate of fire is fantastic and because the machine moves so slowly, uh, the reticle balloon is not very large and you can just pump away as you drive along and expect to hit most of your shots. You see me doing a lot of that in these games. Couldn't quite get to the M4. Cromwell gets that kill, but that's okay. We move back now to the cap. Uh, not too sure where that IS disappeared to, but he does appear to our rear here. Cromwell knows what's up. He goes to cap, but there's the IS. He changes his mind. He's going to charge him down. Come on, Black Prince, move it. 152 millimeters of frontal turret and hull armor. Uh, no complex curves though, it's very flat, meaning you have to treat it like a German heavy, uh, always thinking about your angling. Cromwell, too bold, gets taken out by the IS. And this guy seems to have the most trollish Soviet side armor. Bouncing four shots there, I think it was. Black Prince is in trouble if he misses his shot, but he doesn't, and that's the kill for the win. Well played. It's also got massive tracks running down the side, so if you do angle the armor correctly, you can expect to eat a lot of shells up with these tracks for no damage. The angling of the turret armor is slightly more difficult to optimize. It's got that hexagonal shaped turret, similar to the KV-4 and the E-75 which means you can only angle that front plate of the turret so much before you effectively weaken the cheeks to a point where they are now the weak spot. So 
if you drive the Black Prince, I would angle the hull a lot more than you angle the turret, similar to the way you would play a KB4 and E75, as mentioned before. So the second game is on Desert Sands. I'm with Infinity Strike this time. He's in the Panther, flanking out wide. He's going to come up against some stiff opposition in the form of two Tier 7 mediums. There's a Comet and a Panther out there, which means he is in trouble. He's going to have to retreat to survive that. Uh, he doesn't have much backup. Our allies have stalled at the train track bridge there. So I'm going to try and push forward. I've got plenty of fire support behind me. And I get down here and pause to take a shot at the Panther. Hopefully take the some of the pressure off Infinity Strike. But I need to move on. This is not a safe spot to sit. I have the IS's attention. Keep the vehicle angled. And he hits the side armor for no damage. Now we move on, and now I'm close enough to spot the snipers hiding at the back. Whilst at the same time remaining in a reasonable amount of cover, getting some good shots on the T-150 who should not be up there. And now I've got a VK-301H to my right I need to be careful of, but the IS to my left is hiding, so I'm not in a bad position. I can focus down this guy. I just bounced a shot from the rear. That would have been the Panther or the Comet. Keeping that hull armor angled. You can see I ate a shot there in the tracks whilst receiving a HE round from a hidden KV-1S who is also sniping up the back. There he is. Need to make sure I keep some buildings between myself and him. I wait till I'm hidden and then I intend to approach that building there. Dive back into cover. We're down two tanks at this point. But now I'm safe. Uh, some more server lag there. I'm safe now to finish off this IS. Thankfully, my team has come along with me, so even though we are taking damage from the rear as those mediums flank around, our firepower is going to be nicely concentrated. We're going to move up further here. This EZ-8 driver is going to prove to be a valuable ally. There's that KV on S, still firing HE because it does the most damage apparently. And we work down the T-150. Behind me the Tiger P is hiding behind the buildings near Cap and he's going to get flanked so we need to move back. He's taking heaps of damage. But he goes down fighting, removing the Panther. before the Comet gets the kill. Plenty of hit points remaining, so I'm going to bust into the middle, catch this T-49 out in the open. A couple of HE rounds probably would have got this kill here, but he slips away. Easy 8's on the case though, gets that kill. I angle the armor to attack the Comet. Get in there, Easy 8. Here comes the cave on us again, still firing HE by the looks of it. I can get easily three shots into his one. I lead the Comet to the EZ-8 and focus the KV on S. I don't know why I bother trying to set up for a side scrape if he's firing HE here. It's only going to do splash damage. Again, he's firing HE. Silly KV-1S. Steel Wall, Confederate and Sniper with a first class badge, 3.2k. Infinity Strike, unlucky to get overwhelmed there by those two mediums. 25 shots fired for 21 penetrations. 48,000 credits and a decent amount of XP for that one. Next up, we've got a tier 9 battle on Middleburg, and check out this for a lineup. We've got three tier 9s on our team and four tier 7s versus two tier 9s, three tier 8s, a tier 7, and a tier 5 in a fail platoon, that M4 with an IS-3. <sighs> what an odd game. We're all looking to go to hill, except for the E75. He's going to try and take the town by himself, not paying attention to his team. Try and alert him, but he's in his own world. Off he goes, good luck to him. 
Now, heat rounds in this game, they do not go through spaced armor well. And tracks count as spaced armor. They tend to eat heat rounds up really easily. Now you can see the tracks on the Black Prince extend well in front of the front plate, which means when you angle it, uh, often your front drive wheel there covers up your weak spots uh, at the front. And the tracks run down the full length of the hull and a very dominant feature. This will be important later on as we'll see. IS-6, first tank to draw our attention. He's come far too far forward and has been caught out in the open. Swapping to APCR right now. Not going to muck around bouncing shots off the front of Soviet armor until we are guaranteed to win this game. So swap to the skill rounds there. We take him down, but we've lost half the health on our T-54. And there's the enemy T-54s in the middle. Try and support our mid to high ground here. Our TV4 has gone all the way in, and I would be more comfortable just perched here, pumping shells in that Yag Panther. But this guy is not going to last long without backup. He needs a distraction, so I'm going in. Although it's probably unwise. I need to be on APCR now. But at this moment, my controls decide to freeze up, and I am stuck in place. I cannot do anything. <laughs> Freaking out! Come on! Luckily, as we saw there, the T-54s are spamming gold rounds, and the gold rounds on the T-54 are heat, and a lot of them went into my track. I think the only damage I took there was from the Yag Panther hitting the side of my turret, so very lucky to escape that situation. Thankfully, a lot of T-54 drivers are filthy gold spammers. Terra 14 gets one T-54, and this guy is going to do the fastest reverse <laughs> in this machine I've ever seen. Away he goes. Come back, let me love you. Straight into the building. And he is not going to get away. One hit point remaining. Bop. Our E-75, who's gone full Rambo in town, is doing a commendable job. Uh, calling for help, but he's done really well to hold up those guys, even though one of them is a tier 5 medium tank. Firing on the move to get the M4 as a cheap kill. And the Reds are down to two tanks. No hit there on the T-34. And quick succession, they go down. Well done, team. Second class badge, and nothing else. 17k each for myself and Terra. Coming out on top there in XP. 14 penetrations. Not many credits there with the APCR fired, but 2.8k XP. To finish up, we've got a quickie here on Copperfield. It's another tier seven match. Myself and Infinity Strike again back in his panther. This game develops quite quickly and it's going to test my commentary skills so I'll do my best to keep up but it could be a mess. I'm going to move into a position that works best with tanks with good gun depression uh, but you can make work with any turreted vehicle so long as you take care of your vehicle's positioning. It allows you to get shots on the top road uh, in a fairly safe manner but is vulnerable to anyone appearing to the right of that windmill there. So I approach the hill here, keeping the left hand side of my vehicle uh, facing up the slope and that allows me to get shots down to the right of the windmill and just enough to uh, hit the top road as well where we've just had three tier 7s and a tier 5 tank destroyer appear. That's the bulk of the enemy's force. Lots of firepower there to be careful of but you'll see that I can just take my shot, duck back into cover and it doesn't give the Reds much time to aim. Not that most of them are focusing on me anyway. The T-29's hull from this angle, I can only hit his upper plate and it's sloping is away from me, which means it's thickened. So I'm gonna have a lot of trouble getting through that guy, but he's back up there. The Comet and the Wolverine are quite easy targets. Now we'll see the weakness of this position if you are trying to hit the top road is that anyone appearing where that T-20 is can put flanking fire on you. 
Need to be mindful of that, but I need to keep the pressure on these top reds. Finally get one in the T29 there. Uh, and keep them spotted for our guys on the far side of the map. And try and keep the pressure off that Yag Panther who is about to get swarmed. Trying to take down the Wolverine, ignoring shots from the T20. I get him with a shot that appeared to go through the T29's hole there. I was lucky. Uh, but we're just about to lose the Yag Panther, but our allies have flanked all the way around now. They've taken advantage, luckily, of the Reds being locked down in this position. And they're about to put pressure on that T20, which means I'm now free to engage the T29, the Comet, and not that IS who just got set on fire. Down goes the IS, and I'm still going to have problems with this T29. It's hard to hit his armor for damage from this position, so I swap to APCR. I'm gonna cheat my way out of this situation. Down he goes, back to AP. Take down the Comet, who is now trapped. You're going nowhere, buddy. And now T20 is going to rush me, and this is the wrong thing to do here. I stuff this up. If you're being rushed by a medium in a slow vehicle, you need to back away, keep as much distance as you can whilst you reload. As you see there, he's easily able to get around me uh, because I approached him instead of backing away. But I get away with it. I'm able to reposition and take the shot that kills him. And the Reds are now just down to a T-34 who will not last long. Whack. Infinity Strike gets the kill. That's the game and the episode done, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will endeavor to get that IS-4 episode out ASAP. But in the meantime, good luck in game, and I will see you soon on the next one. Peace.